Tens of thousands of people are forced from their homes as the Waldo fire in Colorado continues to rage this morning. We will have the very latest. Plus, we have a health expert joining us this morning to talk about the effects of social media on eating disorders. We'll discuss signs to look out for if you suspect someone may be suffering from a disorder. And Bowling's U.S. Women's Open is breaking new ground today. We will go live from underneath the Reno Arch for an amazing sight coming up on this Wednesday, June 27, 2012. You're watching News 4 today in high definition. Good Wednesday morning. Thank you so much for choosing us to start your day. I'm Dina Kupfer in for Bill Frankmore this morning. Your time is 6.30 and uh, we have a lot to talk about as far as weather is concerned. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful rest of our week ahead. Of course, one week from today, the 4th of July holiday. If you can believe it, it's already almost July. We're also going to be checking in with a health expert who has more on eating disorders, who's being impacted, and how much social media plays a role in eating disorders with a current uh, uh, demographic among teens and older people. We'll have much more on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. But first in news across the country, more than 32,000 people have been evacuated from their homes in Colorado as the Waldo Fire continues to burn out of control. Since it began on Saturday, the Waldo Fire has destroyed 6,200 acres. That's nearly 10 square miles. Dry conditions and shifting winds have made battling this blaze extremely difficult for firefighters and right now there are more than 750 personnel actively working to stop the blaze which is just 5% contained this morning. All through last night homes there were burning. And we're really going to focus operationally on, on safety both of the public and of the firefighters and try to put our personnel in a position where they can do the most good to affect effectively fight this fire and get it into containment status. And thousands of people have been evacuated from the area. We will be checking in with uh, more from Colorado on the Today Show coming up in just about a half hour. But our hearts and prayers are certainly with the families in Colorado this morning. Well, bringing it back home, one of the biggest companies in the world wants to invest $1 billion here in northern Nevada and open two facilities here. A spokesperson for Apple has announced plans to build a new data storage facility for iCloud just outside of Reno Sparks. The project is expected to create 500 construction jobs and about 300 permanent ones. Apple also says they will infuse at least $1 billion into our area's economy within 10 years, and state leaders hope this is just one of the first of many major corporations wanting to come to town. It opens up the eyes of other companies when a uh, company like Apple chooses Nevada uh, to partner with on a project that's this significant. So I'm sure that they're going to be wondering, should we be in Nevada too? Now, this deal is not quite final. The city of Reno will take up the issue today at the city council meeting before it is reviewed by the state. Well, meanwhile, the field has been narrowed to just five, and this week we are hearing from the first time from candidates vying to fill the Washoe County School District's superintendent seat. The first candidate to take the podium Tuesday at the National Automobile Museum was Harrison Peters. Now, Peters is currently serving as the chief of schools for the Chicago Public School District in Illinois. The second candidate we heard from yesterday was Paul LaMarca. LaMarca is currently serving as the Chief School Accountability Officer for Washoe County. We asked both Peters and LaMarca what makes them the best candidate to fill Dr. Heath Morrison's seat as Washoe County's next superintendent. I think one of the things that set me apart is really bringing a traditional educator's perspective. In order to move the work in education, I feel it's important for me to be able to walk into a classroom and determine, and determine if kids are or are not learning. And I think on a more qualitative basis, people need to feel good about having their children in our schools. And I think they can do that. And we need to continue uh, to, to create climates um, that are safe and supportive of student learning. And coming up later this morning, we will hear again from two more of the superintendent candidates with the final candidate speaking tomorrow. And also this week, town hall meetings are being held for the public to come out, meet the candidates face to face, ask them your own questions. For a full list of town hall meetings, you can head to our website, mynews4.com. All righty, well, your time is now 6.34 on your Wednesday. Let's go ahead and get our weather on the force. Toss it over to Jen Wall. We've got the U.S. Women's Bowling Championship set up right now underneath the Reno Arch downtown. 
certainly is a fun event, and we are going to have beautiful weather in the forecast for the week ahead. That is right. Really looking forward to heating up just in time for your July 4th holiday mm -hmm. and talking about all that extreme heat that's been expanding into the central part of the U.S. Let's talk about records that have been topped or set over the last few days for the second straight day. 105 at Denver, all time high. Six cities tied or set records, all time high records yesterday. 15 more set new June records, including Houston and Austin. 10 cities within the Rockies and the High Plains, all hotter than Death Valley at 108 yesterday. So that puts it in perspective for you. This late June heat wave is really rocking the Rockies and the Plains. As you look more towards western Nevada, though, we're obviously nice and cool on your Wednesday morning. 52 outside. We don't have that extreme heat. Today is going to be about 10 degrees warmer than yesterday, but we're not into the triple digits. Not quite close yet. 52 at Reno, freezing at Truckee, 34 at South Lake Tahoe, 49 at Lovelock. We do have a trough in the west coast, and so that's going to just keep temperatures a little bit more moderated over the next couple of days, but as you look more east, if you get away from the coast, we do heat up close to 90 today. Strong high pressure in the central U.S. that is expanding that heat wave. That will continue to grow for drier conditions. And we do have red flag warnings in effect east of Reno. Those start at about 11 o'clock this morning for Nye, Lander, Eureka counties, all south of Highway 50. Yesterday, we were 7 degrees below average. Overnight low, about 4 degrees below average. Today, there's your heating up temperature, 89 and 56 at Reno, 88, 54 at Gerlach, 70s around Virginia City today and in the Sierra. So we're looking for 80s and 90s in western Nevada, 70s in the Sierra, 50s overnight. And we will continue to heat it up throughout the rest of the week, Dina. All righty, thank you so much for that, Jen. Well, let's go ahead and take a quick look at our roadways this morning. We've got Trooper Chuck Allen from NHP on the phone. Good morning, Chuck. How are things looking out there so far? Well, good morning, Dina. We are off to a terrific start on this Wednesday morning's commute. We are currently crashing incident-free throughout the entire region of northern Nevada with no slowdowns reported anywhere throughout the area. So, folks, if you're headed out, please don't forget to buckle up before you leave your home. Limit those distractions while driving. And Dina, I'll send it right back to you in the studio. All right. Thanks so much for that, Chuck. Well, Bowling U.S. Women's Open is making history tonight. News 4's Ashley Collins is live in downtown Reno underneath the arch where a couple of lanes have been set up. A really great sight to see. We're going to have good weather for this. Good morning, Ashley. Good morning, Dina. Yes, I am downtown on Virginia Street, where, as you can see, there are lanes set up behind me for the U.S. Women's Open Finals tonight. The women have been qualifying all week long, and the field is narrowed from 265 women down to five who will bowl under the arch tonight. And one of those bowlers is here with me now. Um, she was in the qualifying rounds this week. Her name is Clara Guerrero. Clara. You know, you've been warming up this morning, playing under the arch a little bit. What's it like to bowl outside? It is unbelievable. It's definitely something new for us. There are so many variables, the lights, the people moving, the wind. But it's just spectacular. It's going to be a great final. What has this week been like for you? Uh, it has been great. Obviously, I will have liked to be in the finals tonight, but uh, it was good bowling. The level of the competition is quite high. It's one of our majors, and it was just great. Uh, Reno welcomed all the bowlers uh, really good, so we had a great week. I had a great week. What's the difference between bowling in the National Bowling Stadium just around the corner and bowling out here under the arch? There are many, many differences. Uh, the stadium, definitely, the temperature, you can control it. It's an environment that we are familiar with. Well, uh, you can control many things. Well, here, you really don't know what is going to happen. You don't know how the light is going to be, if the wind is going to blow, uh, the dust, if, so many things that you cannot control. So the girls are going to have to uh, be really prepared mentally. It's going to be challenging. Are you excited to come down and watch tonight? Yes, definitely. Um, my roommate is going to be in the show, Stephanie Nation, so I'm going to be rooting for her. All right. Well, thank you, Clara. Thank you. The events kick off around 6.30 tonight. There's a festival going on in addition to bowling, so if you want to come down and check it out, you can see it all live under the arch. Reporting from downtown Reno, Ashley Collins, News 4. All righty. Thank you so much for that, Ashley. A lot on the line also. Somebody who bowls a perfect game tonight could win $1 million, so it's something to definitely go and check out. All righty. Well, U.S. stock futures are wavering as investors weigh healthy U.S. manufacturing data against looming structural issues in Europe. Let's find out how the marketing is opening up this morning. We have our financial planner, John Sanchez, joining us over the phone. Good morning, John. Well, good morning, Dina. 
Well, it was very quiet in the pre-market session. Now that the market is open, not a bad start here. 43-point gain on the Dow Jones Industrial Average at 15 on the NASDAQ and a 7-point increase on the S&P 500. On the economic side, we had uh, at 530 the durable goods data released. You know, that was the, uh, those are your big ticket items, automobiles, jet airplanes, etc. cetera. Uh, Seven-tenths of a percent gain in the month of May versus a nine-tenths of a percent increase in the month of April. Also, at 7 o'clock, we're going to have the pending home sales data, so that's always a very important one. As far as uh, movers and shakers, Lennar having a very good session uh, right now of almost 4%, 3.87 to be exact, $1.07 increased to $28.45 after the home builder reported earnings of $0.21 cents a share. That was $0.04 cents above Wall Street's expectations. The problem stock of the day, it is O'Reilly Automotive, right now down $17.27, a 17.91% loss to $79.17 a share. The company uh, cut their sales guidance for the second quarter. Expecting same store sales to uh, be only in the range of two to two and a half percent increase compared to previous estimates of three to five percent. They also lowered their uh, uh, earnings per share guidance to be somewhere between a dollar thirteen to a dollar seventeen. So definitely under pressure on that stock. Do you know right now the, the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average is on the upside by thirty eight points. Nasdaq gaining fourteen. S and P higher by six. Back to you in the studio. Have a great day. Alrighty, you do the same, John. Thank you so much. Well, thousands of people have eating disorders across the country and across the world. We're going to be checking in with the health expert coming up about social media's role in eating disorders and what you can do to help. That's straight ahead. But first, here is our job of the day. For this and more listings, just head to our website, mynews4.com. But first, here's a look at your travel forecast across the region. We'll be right back with your local forecast in just a couple minutes.